Amen. We want to welcome all of you to our Christmas Eve service. I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And um, I just want to say that uh, the, tonight as we focus um, on Christmas and what it's about, we're going to talk about two very important things. One, we're going to talk about why Jesus came and the fact that he came. And then we're going to talk about the truth that he's coming back. And um, so let's... Um, Let's pray together, and then Pastor Steve is going to come and share with us uh, our Advent reading for tonight. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you that we are gathered here tonight in the name of Jesus. Um, that's why we're here. And we celebrate the fact that you left the splendor of heaven and stepped into this world. Um, and you made it possible for us to have salvation, and we thank you for that. Lord, tonight I pray that we would be mindful that you are meeting us right now where we are and that you love us. And we pray this in your name. Amen. The time came. The time came quiet. All the glory had been left in heaven and the face of God turns one last time in the waters of the womb, and the membrane breaks, and the amniotic fluid leaks, and the skin of God slips naked and small and holy into hands he made. The birth of God, who can find words? This defies words. The birth of God, this incites war. This night, under the cover of darkness, behind the velvet curtain of silent stars, the agonies of redemption bear down loud. This night, in the deep of the heights, as the book of Revelation tells it, and we have a revelation of all hell breaking loose and racing God to get under our skin, of an all-out cosmic war spinning across space, of the king of the forces of good driving a daring raid right into the flank of the beast who is a crimson gash tearing the waiting sky. The nativity of this night is a brutality of heaven and earth. In the heavenlies, according to the nativity of Revelation, the child breaches, the beast lunges, and her eyes flash away, too terrified to witness evil devouring holiness and our one last hope. All of earth holds its desperate, wild breath. And then at the last possible moment of all this impossible, the infant is seized and thrust to the throne. The child lives, rescue is certain, and all of hell makes one last lunge, clashes desperate, the dark horde of evil wrestling Michael and the heavenly host, and then it's over. Satan falls like lightning from heaven, falls out of the sky in a heap, and now over Bethlehem in the nativity according to Luke, the star hangs high, victorious on a silent night, a holy night. Now all is calm. God comes. God comes quiet. This night a battle has been waged and won for you. Love had to come back for you. Love had to get to you. The love that has been coming for you since the beginning. He slays dragons for you. This is the truest love story of history, and it's his story, and it's for you. Jesus, 
asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying. Look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee Christmas time, we think about, um, we tend to think about stories at Christmas time, don't we? Or maybe I'm just getting older and I tell more stories. I don't know what it is, but each year we have more Christmas stories and new ones. Uh, for, for our family this year, we had our first Christmas with baby Caden, and that's an awesome thing. And it's another story in the, in the line of Christmas stories that we can talk about, right? And memories we can talk about. And there's I've been blessed to always have as a strong pull in our family um, a focus on why Jesus came and why that story is important. I remember um, one Christmas Eve, I think I was five, and I think it, I think it fell on a Sunday that year because usually we opened our presents on Christmas morning, but this particular year we opened them on Christmas Eve night after our service. And I remember, I don't remember a lot, but I do remember um, coming, getting home that night, and my, my dad's parents, my grandpa and grandpa Hordup, were with us at church that year. And I remember, uh, and my grandpa Hordup was a big guy. They called him Big John then, and, uh, or Jack. He went by both, but usually you know, they called him Big John. And I remember he took us for a drive around our little community, looking at Christmas lights with his grandkids, and we thought it was great. You know, Christmas lights look so much cooler when you're a little kid. And they're still cool now, but... Um, so I remember that, and I remember coming home, and he would always talk about... I was blessed. Both my grandparents always talked about why Jesus came, and he would always talk about that. And I remember coming home to be being surprised that somehow um, there was... The surprise, we were able to open presents that night. I got a blue and white record player, you know. So if for you young people, records are getting popular again. Research it. But, but I remember that because at the age of five, I was beginning to understand that there was something we were celebrating that was bigger than just that day. And his name is Jesus. You know, Christmas is a time where people want to step in the stories for some reason. Um, I did some quick, quick research the other day, and I found out that the Hallmark Movie Channel this year carries with it more than 300 Christmas movies that you can watch. <laughs> They're all the same. One story. <laughs> One story, different actors, kinda. Anyway, but... Uh, but anyway, I thought about that. Man, we, somehow people want to find that, that one story that's going to grab them. And we also know at Christmas time, many people have this letdown or this struggle um, or this, this, 
this feeling that, is, that sometimes leads them to a time of despair. But it's so much more than just this season. It's about Jesus. Um, and I think about that. And I think about, um, you know, I mentioned this morning, whenever I hear the Christmas story, I can hear my grandfather Thompson reading it in my mind. And I also think about my, my grandpa John Hordup saying, we, won't, we would not celebrate Christmas if there wasn't a cross. And I heard those things every year growing up, and they shaped what I know about Christmas. And I think that's part of the reason why no matter what struggle I'm walking through, I have hope, because I know it's not about a day. It's about a God who loves us, who stepped into this earth, Emmanuel, God with us. So in the Gospel of John, John talks about this. He talks about why Jesus came. And the, and the prophets were speaking about this and and continually telling us that the Savior was going to be born, was going to be born in Bethlehem, was going to, was going to uh, look like everyone else, but be different. And John says in, in verse 1 of chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, He was with God in the beginning. In other words, John says, look, in the beginning was all that is only truth. That's God. There's no lying in Him. And he was there, and he created everything. Through him, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. it goes on in verse 10. It says, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. John's saying, look, God left the splendor of heaven and he moved in with us. And many didn't recognize him. But he moved in with us. And he lived with us. Then he says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural decision, nor of human decision, our husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. If we were to translate that from, and, and as literal as you can from the early manuscripts, it would, be, it would be something like he pitched his tent in our midst. In other words, he moved into our neighborhood and he built his home there and he lived with us. And we can, we can understand why Jesus came when we look at it, the entirety of his life. He came to the world he created, but became, wanted us to understand him better wanted us to understand of his love, of his mercy, of his grace, of his forgiveness, of his authority. When Jesus started his ministry, he, he preached that we, would, that we would repent and follow him. That we would be immersed in who he is. And so Jesus came in that first advent to fulfill a purpose. A purpose that the big exclamation point was the cross. But the cross, which up to that, up till Jesus' day, meant only death, has now means something more because Jesus defeated the cross, right? And he rose again. And it reminds us that in Jesus there is eternal life. So I want to share with you tonight, I, I, I want to go now to the second chapter of Luke. And I want you to hear these words. And I want us to reflect on them tonight as we're gathered here in the name of Jesus and, and hear and think about what it would be like to have been there. I want to ask you again to step into, step into the nativity as if you're witnessing it. Maybe you were on duty as a shepherd that night, working the night shift, and angels came and you heard them singing. But Luke writes, beginning of chapter 2, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This is the first census that took place by Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. 
He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they'd been told. Jesus showed up in the world that was in need of him. Jesus showed up at a time, Luke tells us earlier, in his first chapter, it was the time of King Herod, which tells us it was a difficult time. It was a hard time. Politically, it was a very hard time for, for the people of Judea. But God showed up, and he stepped in came to this world as an infant dependent on human care, born in the most humble of ways for all people. And the first people to see it were common, ordinary shepherds who saw and proclaimed what they saw and glorified God, giving him praise for what they saw. And Jesus came to show us how we can live and walk in relationship with him and how we can know him. We're reminded in Hebrews that we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us, but we have one who understands us because he was tempted in every way as we are but was without sin. Jesus knows us. He showed us how we can know him and we can receive him. We can receive his gift of love. We can receive his forgiveness. And we can hang on to the truth that all of his promises are true. And I pray that you know him. Father, as we continue to worship you tonight, I pray that we would listen and respond and know and be reminded that you came into a dark world bringing light. The truth that you are the Savior of the world. You're the Messiah, the Holy One of God, the Redeemer. And we thank you for that truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Snow on 
snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago, our God and cannot hold him, nor earth breathes a stain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed the Lord God incarnate, Jesus Christ. Enough for him whom cherubim worship night and day. A breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him whom angels fall down before the ox and ass and camel which adore angels and archangels may have gathered there Christ, Terabim, and Seraphim throng the air. But his mother only in her maiden bliss worship the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. But what can I bring him, bring my my heart, what I can I give him, give my heart. I was sitting there uh, thinking during that song how, <clears throat> how amazing it is that some 2,000 years after the birth of this baby that we still celebrate his birth. Uh, it speaks, of course, and quite obviously to the importance and significance of this baby, this baby Jesus. Uh, but uh, I think more critical than that, it speaks to the significance on the uh, impact on humankind. I think, uh, and I've been thinking through there, our entire Advent season as we recognize that Advent is, is 
coming, the coming of Jesus. Uh, and we celebrate, of course, the first Advent uh, during the Christmas season. I've been thinking every time I'm here in the sanctuary and, and looking at our, our decorations throughout the building and looking at uh, uh, the manger sitting up here. Uh, and we have uh, a decoration around it that uh, you know, some may say look like a Christmas tree and the like in front of the cross, uh, but I keep thinking how appropriate that at this manger in a stable of some sort, that if humanity is able to look upon that baby, you can almost see the cross laying behind that manger much like we do now. And then if we're able to look a little bit more with our, uh, with our spiritual experience and our biblical knowledge, behind, behind the cross lies an empty tomb for a Savior who is risen. And behind that empty tomb is the church, empowered by the Holy Spirit. These interactions of God with humanity that forever change the course of, of humankind uh, are so powerful and so beautiful, and you cannot, in my mind anyway, celebrate one without celebrating all the others. It's impossible to celebrate the birth of Jesus without uh, being in awe of and humbled by His death on the cross for the sins of all humanity. And it's impossible uh, to look at His birth and His uh, death without acknowledging his resurrection. And it's impossible to look at his resurrection without looking at what has happened since then, the creation of his church, his body on earth, empowered by the Holy Spirit to bring people into his presence, into the knowledge, into the knowing of the gospel uh, and the truth that is for all. And so this Advent season, as we think about the birth of a little baby uh, and look through, maybe even so faintly, to uh, the cross and the empty tomb and the church behind it, I want to share with you a passage from, uh, from Paul's letter to Titus. And it's uh, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. And it reads, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Not a traditional Christmas passage of Scripture, but a passage of Scripture that encapsulates that, uh, that, that very scene from, from manger to the cross to the empty tomb through the church, the era that we live in now. And yet, looking ahead to Jesus' return, His next advent, His next coming. Because any one of those pieces without the other is really quite meaningless and quite insignificant. And Paul, in this letter to Titus, points this out, that uh, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. God, out of His grace, sent His Son, Jesus, to this earth to live among us. This grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. This life of Christ on earth teaches us still today through His written Word, teaches us to say no to the things that are ungodly, to say no to worldly passions, 
teaches us to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Be it a time of celebration or be it a, a, a bleak midwinter time. While we wait for the blessed hope. This Christmas season, I want to challenge you, uh, whether it be tomorrow or later on when uh, the activities in your home have settled down uh, and you have the news on, because I know there are people here who watch the news, and I know amongst any group of people there are people who watch the news more than they should. I want to challenge you when you watch the news and you grieve, and almost shudder with despair at what you see going on around the world. To remember that we have this blessed hope. We are waiting for this blessed hope. The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who will come again. Within each generation, it seems like all creation is groaning and yearning for His return. Perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps intentional by God's design with a fallen world so that we hunger and yearn for Him. And yet we have what satisfies that hope, that yearning, that hunger. We have the hope and the knowledge of Jesus to come again. The same Jesus who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness, to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. As you celebrate Christmas tonight, tomorrow, and days ahead, as you think about the baby in the manger, I hope, I pray, that you think about the cross, that you think about His death for your sins and for the sins of those around you, that you think about His resurrection, that Jesus had conquered death in the grave, that He is who He said He was, who Scripture said He was and is. And that you see and become part of His church, the very expression of Himself today in 2023, soon to be 2024. For this gift of a babe in a manger, forever rewrote history, forever rewrites the present and certainly has rewritten the future. We've talked a lot this Advent season about uh, the roots, Jesus' story, the fact that He had a story, the, a people that He came from, a place that He came from, a purpose, and the fact that you and I do as well. His story for humanity has been told and continues to be told again in little church buildings like this throughout the world. It's your story and my story that has the potential to be changed. Christmas isn't just about what happened 2,000 years ago. It's about what's happening today. And it's about what is happening today for you and your forever, and your family and their forever. So as you celebrate Christmas, it's my hope, my prayer for you, that you do so with the knowledge and the confidence that Jesus has a dwelling place within your very spirit, and that in so doing, you look forward as we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ, not with fear, but with hope and anticipation for when He comes to make all things new. Will you pray with me? Father, we praise You, and we are so thankful 
uh, for the gift of your Son. Brought into humanity in human form. In the most meek and humble way. Uh, to live a life that has taught us and continues to teach us so much of how to, how to live and how to love one another. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that that life was a life given to pay the price for my sins for the sins of those of us gathered today, for the sins of those of us in our, our, our families, our friends, our neighbors. That we might have hope, Lord. That when we despair, and oh, there's so much reason to despair, that hope reigns triumphant. For that is what Christmas is about, Lord. And we look forward, we look forward to Jesus' return. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Bible tells us um, when the angels showed up on that first Christmas night to the shepherds, the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But then the angels told them, do not be afraid. The light of Jesus um, cuts through the darkness. And um, when we um, go into the world as followers of Christ, we have an opportunity to share the truth in the light of Jesus. Um, we don't have to um, be great speakers. We don't have to be perfect people. We can understand the Lord Jesus has rescued me from where I was. And the light of Jesus lives within me. And we can share that truth with the world around us. So tonight as we sing this last song, we're going to pass the light and be reminded that it is the light of Jesus that shines within us that we're able to uh, share with the world and uh, share with them that they can know Jesus as well. So we're going to sing together Silent Night as we uh, pass the light.
God's quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven above, heavenly all sing hallelujah, Christ the Savior is born. Singers, can you help us do that a cappella one time? us to pray together and I want to ask you to keep every eye open because you're holding fire. <laughs> but let's pray. Father God, tonight we are each holding a candle and we're able to see how light penetrates the darkness. And we know it can be seen from a long way off. And the Bible tells us the darkness can never overcome the light. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be men and women and young people who understand that the light of Jesus Christ living within us shines in a world that is in need of knowing that you love them. Lord, help us to be your witnesses. Lord, we thank you for this season that reminds us that you came and you lived and you died and you rose again and you're coming back. Lord, I pray that we would, as we celebrate Jesus, that we would celebrate what it means to follow you and to know you. We thank you for these things, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas, everybody.